Welcome to our online community. I think we've just about got everyone in again, which is fantastic. Thank you to all the youth for vacating your seats to give us room. Great problems we're having here at the moment. Those problems are going to become new problems in three weeks. Good, more, more problems, which is good. Can you believe it? 27 days. 27 days. And... Um, just want to apologize if the sound is a little uh, fragmented at home as well. Obviously, we're taking out some of our infrastructure in the building. And so um, as we do that, we're having to fill it with, as Steve said, those bad boys. Um, but they seem to be doing the job, which is great. So good to see you all. I'm going to hand out a card to you called 10 Things You Need to Remember Over the Next few weeks, um, so I'm not going to hand out our amazing host team. In fact, would you thank our host team, all of our dream team? We really do appreciate you. Okay, I'm just going to fly through these really quickly. It'll be really helpful for you. Um, first of all, our Sunday service, it's an acronym. You see that? Our new, our new home, Katie Cooper put that together. How good is she? Our Sunday service will move online on the 25th of February, so two weeks today. Um, it will be an online service, or sorry, three weeks, two weeks or three weeks? Come on, Sharon, help me out. Three weeks, three weeks a day, it'll be online. The reason we can't have a physical service is obviously everything will have come out of here and we're installing everything in the new place. We need to do training and everything for the following weekend, which is the opening on the 2nd and the 3rd of March. So um, it'll be an online service, so you can take church to the beach with you, you can take church to... The park, you can, so it'll be online and uh, we'll be getting ready for the following weekend. You, understanding and patience is key for this new adventure. Okay, so next week the screen will have gone. Okay, different things will be happening. And uh, so we just need lots of patience with each other. Everyone's doing their best. That's for the online community and in the room. And we're going to get through this season strong. So lots of patience needed. Um, our register. Okay, please, please, please register to be part of our opening weekend. Saturday night is completely sold out. Um, Sunday morning, I'm told there's 50, 60 seats left for the 10 a.m. We've added a 1 p.m. service on the Sunday. Okay, so give you an opportunity to invite. We put that up on Wednesday already. Over 200 seats have gone for that. Okay, so we're expecting that to fill up as well. And then Sunday night, there's a couple of hundred seats left for the Sunday night worship night with Martin Smith. So we've got four opening weekend services. Who thinks that's amazing? Okay, over 300, 3,000 people have registered for our opening weekend. And I hope you're one of them. Okay, I hope you're one of them. If you haven't registered, don't register during my message, okay? Because, I don't know, but just don't do that during my message. But as soon as you get home, register, okay? And we want to make sure that we get all of our church family there on the opening weekend. Our new service times, okay, new service times for after that weekend are 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. 10 a.m. and 5 p.m., so it's going to be uh, wonderful to have the 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. coming together and worshiping. And uh, I don't know how long that will be for, but we'll, we'll see. E, everyone. Now, this is really critical. Come off Instagram for one minute. Everyone, please turn left when you leave the new building, okay? It's really going to help the, 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 the car flow if you can turn left onto Hartsey's Lane and not turn right, okay? So that's, we're going to have people there encouraging people to turn left, okay? If you need to go right, turn left, go to KFC, come back again pick up some nuggets. W, what, where, and who. Okay, so if you turn, the, if you turn up, turn over a little piece of card, there is a map of our new building, which will show you where to go. H, hot drinks in our new church must have lids. Okay, you say, well, why are you telling us that now? Because we want to know, we, we, we want to protect our new church, okay? We want people to enjoy, it's a home, so we want people to have a hot drink. If you want a hot drink in service, I have a hot drink in service, okay? But we really encourage you, please, keep that lid on. Oh, now this is, this is really important. On our opening weekend, Saturday and Sunday, we are going to be having a special offering that day called Paid in Full with Overflow. And we are believing that that Sunday or shortly after, our building's going to be paid in full. And so we want to give the church, our online community, an opportunity that day to sow a seed to really bring down the loan on that building. 
And so I want us all to be prayerfully considering the part that we can play that weekend to remove the debt. And I believe we're going to step into a new season, debt free as a church. But it's going to mean all of us considering the part that we can play. It's a seed offering that day into, into that. So come prepared. We've given you a couple of weeks notice on that. Um, M, momentum moves with us. Okay, we've got real momentum in the church, but one thing I noticed on the Dream Team training night on Tuesday is it's a whole new environment. It's a lot bigger. It's three times the size of this environment. Okay, and it's easy to kind of get lost. It's easy to kind of get, you know, spin out when you walk in that room. But we want to carry the worship, the presence of God, everything, the energy that we have. We want to make sure we carry it into that room on that opening weekend. And number E, or letter E, everyone is welcome. Who will you invite? Come on, let's, I've been inviting people, I'm sure you have, but let, let's get the word out there to invite people. Get them across to the, to the 1 p.m. service or the 5 p.m. on that Sunday, and let's see God's house fall on that opening weekend. If we fill it, it means there'll be 5,000 people who'll come through the door on our opening weekend, which would be incredible, incredible, incredible. So, All right, if you've still got your message card, New Year's Revolution... We're going to continue on, but before we do that, let's pray. Father God, we come into your presence with thanksgiving. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you that you've got us on to the edge of the Jordan, and you will not fail us as we cross safely. So I pray over these next few days and weeks, you'd give us the strength, the determination. You'd give us patience with one another, Father. Your church would keep that, that faith-filled momentum that we have, and we would see the church advance across the earth in Jesus' name. Amen. So this is session six in our series, New Year's Revolution. And at the start of 2024, we talked about not just setting resolutions, but actually asking God for a revolution. I believe we're even beginning to see that happen. And so the week one, we talked about the, the grace revolution. Week two, expecting signs and wonders. Three, valuing, valuing the weak and the oppressed. Week four, operating under the power of the Holy Spirit. Not our spirit, but his spirit. Two weeks ago, the sin master, Steve Morstan, talks about letting go of sin. I'm just joking. This week, hallmark number six, uphold the name of Jesus. I love the name of the film, Jesus Revolution. They could have called it a religious revolution, They could have called it a a church revolution. They could have called it a young adults revolution. I love the fact that the the revolution was called a Jesus revolution. Why? Because these hippies, if you haven't seen, who's seen the film yet? Have you seen the film Jesus Revolution? If you haven't, watch it, download it on Amazon. These hippies had been experiencing a drug revolution. They had been experiencing a sexual revolution. They had been experiencing a new age revolution. But then they experienced something eternal. They experienced a Jesus revolution. And when they came into contact with Jesus, they realized that he could do more for them than any of the others. And these young hippies were so passionate, so unashamed about the name of Jesus. Why? Because Jesus had radically transformed their lives their habits, their, their futures, their friendships. And the similarities that we've been looking at between the early church in the book of Acts and the Jesus revolution are astounding. And today our passage comes from Acts chapter 3. Before we go through this, Acts chapter 3, this is the first recorded miracle of the church. So there's been millions, millions upon millions of miracles up until this point, but this was the first miracle of the church. And in the middle or the start of this revolution, Peter and John are on their way to church or the temple as it was called. And they come across a man who is disabled. We're going to pick up the story there in Acts chapter 3 verse 1. It says, one day Peter and John were going up to the temple, the church, at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. And a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. The Bible doesn't tell us anything about this man. It doesn't tell us his name. It doesn't tell us his age. All we know is he positioned himself at the doors, the gates of the church, and he showed up daily. 
He showed up hoping that maybe a good Christian or someone visiting the church would toss a coin into his cap. Maybe throw him a crust of bread. Maybe he could gather something to get him through another day. Everybody else was getting through the doors and going into church, but he was stuck on the edge of the door. You see, this man, the Bible says that the gate was called beautiful. He laid at a beautiful gate, but he had an ugly problem. There's a lot of people in our city, they don't know about a gate called beautiful. And they lay outside of that gate, and the ugliness of sin and shame and guilt keeps them from coming through the doors of the gate. Verse 3 says, when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. And Peter said, look, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. And then Peter said something that the, the beggar, the disabled individual, did not want to hear. He said, silver and gold I do not have. That is the last thing a beggar or a homeless person wants to hear from you. If you've ever been in a city or you've been walking down a street and someone is begging and you literally have nothing on you, you ever been in that position? The last thing they want to hear is, I haven't got anything. The last thing this beggar wanted to hear was, you don't have any money. But then one word in this story changes everything. If we can just put the text back up on the screen. It says, keep it going, but. The but changes the story. I've not got silver or gold. I've got no pound coins to give you, but I have something which is even greater than what you think you need. But what I do have, I'm going to give you that. The but changes everything. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. That's probably, possibly one of the most powerful five words in Scripture. Right there. Taking in verse 7 by the hand, he helped him up and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong and he jumped to his feet and began to walk. Look what happens in this moment. This individual goes from a liability to an asset. He goes from a taker to a giver. In that one moment, everything changes for this man. They recognized him, verse 10, as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple, called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. God bless the reading of your word. I want to share today five insights into the authority of the name of Jesus. I want to speak on the authority of the name of Jesus. You probably picked up from the from the song choices, the worship choices this morning about that we've been declaring the name of Jesus into the atmosphere. There are five five things that jump out of this passage that I want to unpack today. The first one is this. We've got to recognize the authority of his name. Peter said, silver or gold, I do not have, but what I do have, I'm going to give to you. The invalid only knew the power of something natural to change his situation. If I put If you put your hand up now and said, how can I help you? A lot of you would say, well, if you could just give me this money to clear my debt or help me with this or help. You know, we see the natural changes to our natural situation. But Peter Peter and John come along and say, I'm going to give you something even greater than silver and gold. That's exactly the opposite of what people think today. People think more money equates to problems being solved. Peter and John knew an authority of something even greater than silver and gold. Why? Because they just spent three years with Jesus. They'd seen him cast out demons. They'd seen him raise the dead. They'd seen him feed, heal the sick. They'd seen him feed the hungry. You see, in Bible times, a name, a name wasn't just a name. They didn't just name anyone. 
They named you according to what they believed your destiny would be, your identity would be. When God changed Abraham's name to Abraham, he was not changing his name, he was changing his identity. Abraham means father of many nations. So when God changed his name, he was changing his future, his destiny, and his identity. Today, we just, we re, you know, people, people name their children and they buy a book, How to Name a Child. And we just think, oh, that's a cute name. We see it on TikTok. We go, oh, I'll name my child. That's a cool name. But that's not how it worked back in the Bible times. Your name was your identity. Your name was your destiny. Because names carry power and authority. Jesus, now I want you to take this down. Jesus' name contains more power and authority than any string of words we can put together. However many words we could try and sum up authority, his name contains them all. His name, the name of Jesus, is the name above every other named thing. Our Father has given you and I, God our Father has given you and I the authority to use His Son's name, Jesus. That means as Christians, we have been given power of attorney. If you're familiar with that legal term. Legally, a power of attorney is the authority to act on another person's behalf upon their request. Now wait for this. It's authorization... By one person, God our Father, permitting another person, which is you and I, to take action on his behalf, which is Jesus Christ. So God gives us authority to act on his son's behalf. We have the authority of Jesus. This is the power of his name. When you say the name of Jesus, you are laying down your authority and you are picking up the authority of heaven and you are speaking on behalf of God the Father using his son's name, Jesus. When you speak the name of Jesus, you are declaring God to put his son Jesus into action on your behalf. In Ephesians, the church is described as the bride of Christ. We are the bride of Christ, which means Christ, Jesus, is the bridegroom. Now, when you get married, a bride takes on the bridegroom's surname, which means when we come into covenant, the church, the bride of Christ, with Christ, we take on his name. So we have come into covenant with Christ. So when Chantel married me on April the 7th, 2006, became the luckiest girl on earth, (laughs) she received Norman by covenant. She had had an upgrade. She went from Chantel Cruz to Chantel Norman. I mean, have you ever? I actually quite like the sound of John Cruz, but anyway, that's for, a, <laughs> that's for another lifetime. She received the name Norman by covenant. By covenant, she is now Chantel Norman. What does that do? That gives her the right to our bank accounts. That gives her the right to our family home. That gave her the right to our possessions. She came in to covenant based on her new identity. When you and I received Christ, we came into covenant with Christ through the precious blood of Jesus. He brings us into covenant, which means we have a brand new identity in him, which means we have the authority of Jesus. So I am still John Norman, But I also have, I was born John Norman, but I was reborn John Norman, child of Almighty God. So I have a new authority. See, the first step into understanding the authority of Christ is to recognize his authority. To recognize it. When sickness, lack, poverty 
comes near, I have to recognize whose and who I am in Christ. I am a new creation. A new creation. Why am I a new creation? Because I am now walking as a child of God. I come, I face sickness, I face lack, what do I do? I recognize the authority of Jesus Christ. Number one, you've got to recognize the authority of his name. Number two, you've got to speak out the authority of his name. It's not just enough to recognize it, you've got to declare it, speak it out. I love what Peter said. He said, in the name. He didn't say in the name of Peter, the disciple, or John, the disciple. He didn't say in the name of Nick or Jin. He said, in the name of Jesus, the one I have come into covenant through, which gives me authority. Peter speaks out the authority of his name. God has given us a name to use as a weapon. Luke 10, 19 says, I have given you, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. Other versions say, over all the powers of darkness. Who knows the world is dark? It's broken. God didn't send us into a broken world without giving us a weapon. What commander-in-chief would send his troops into a, into, into a deadly situation without giving him weapons? God has given us a weapon. It's his son's name, Jesus. We are on a battlefield, but God has not sent us in unarmed. So I want to show us as a church what to do when we don't know what to do. Has anyone got any situations right now where you literally go, I don't know what to do? One of us. <laughs> maybe you've prayed, maybe you've fasted in January, maybe you've given, maybe you've read every book you can, get your hands on. I want to show you what to do when you don't know what to do. And uh, it's going to be tough because so much of our Christian walk has been conditioned into praying a certain way at a certain time, doing certain things. But in this story, the very first miracle of the church, it messes all of that up. It messes it all up. Here it is. Here's what to do when you don't know what to do. Are you ready? Just speak Jesus. Just speak Jesus. Maybe you're at your wit's end. Maybe you don't even know how to pray anymore. Maybe you've tried everything. Maybe your house won't sell. Your baby won't sleep. Maybe you're on the edge of losing everything. I want to encourage you. Three words. Just speak Jesus. Turn to the person next to you and say, just speak Jesus. Turn to your second favorite. Say, just speak Jesus too. Just speak Jesus. I love that line in that song we sang this morning. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name, Jesus. Do you know it's interesting in that part of the song, everyone always sings that one a little bit louder, that line. Because family's special, isn't it? Why do we say we speak Jesus? Because we've tried, we've tried the flowers. We've tried to do everything else. We've tried it, but hasn't. So I, all I've got left is, I just speak Jesus. I just speak Jesus. Maybe the man at the gate, maybe he'd been, people had prayed for him, fasted for him, helped him. They tried everything. Took him to a Benny Hinn crusade. Maybe everything had happened for that man, but nothing had changed. And then Peter and John said, do you know what? We've just hung out with Jesus for three years. What we recognize is there is power and authority in his name. And so just speak Jesus. When we speak Jesus, we are speaking salvation because that name is an empty name. That name means deliverance. It means healing. It means power. It means salvation. We speak Jesus. If sickness is bothering you, who's sick right now in this room? You're sick right now. I speak Jesus. Yeah. Teresa, I speak Jesus over you. I speak Jesus. Yeah. I speak Jesus right now. I speak Jesus. I speak Jesus. I speak Jesus right now. I speak Jesus. 
The only thing left is Jesus. If your marriage is in trouble, I speak Jesus right now. I speak Jesus. The divorce papers have already been sent. I speak Jesus. I speak Jesus right now. If you're in debt right now and there's no way out and you've even thought about doing something crazy, I speak Jesus right now. I speak Jesus online to every person going through anxiety. I speak Jesus over cancer right now. I speak Jesus over bronchitis. I speak Jesus right now over respiratory conditions, herniated discs, kidney infections, muscle strains, anxiety, bipolar. I speak Jesus. Come on, speak his name. Jesus. I speak Jesus over eating disorders right now. Jesus. Schizophrenia, I speak Jesus. Right now, those watching online, you've been experiencing panic attacks. I speak Jesus right now. Addictions have to bow to the name of Jesus. Alcoholism has to go at the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is above diabetes today. The name of Jesus is above COVID. It's above arthritis. The name of Jesus is above high blood pressure, low blood pressure. The name of Jesus. Mark 16. Let me show you a verse. Mark 16. It says this, in my name they will cast out demons, speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything, anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. The problem is with this is we forget the first three words of this verse. What does it say? It says, in my name. Someone prayed for me recently. I turned to him after, I said, I don't want to pull you up. Thanks for the prayer, but you haven't even mentioned Jesus. Where's the authority? Because it's not in your name. It's not in your name. The name, the power, the authority is in the name of Jesus. I want to encourage you, you have to speak his name. You, every time I declare our building is paid in full, what I say? By faith in who? Jesus. It's not by faith in a business or by faith in a church. It's by faith in Jesus. Our faith has to be activated as we speak. I want to challenge us this week to pray differently. So I don't, I mean, so many people say, John, I don't know how to pray. Here, ready? Speak Jesus. Just start with Jesus. I was on an airplane with Chantel recently and we were, we, were, we were coming back, and the, the, the flight was pretty much empty. So we had four seats to ourselves, which is always, I mean, that is always, that is good news. And so obviously, as a good husband, I gave my wife three. <laughs> Six foot three, me, sat on one. And um, I got to tickle her toes for five hours, which is amazing, <laughs> literally. She's not here today, so I can have some fun. <clears throat> She's watching, so I need to be careful. I've got to be extra careful in three weeks because um, my mother-in-law arrives. And that, uh, yeah, I speak Jesus. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Morning, Cindy. Hope you're watching. She's a treasure and she's a pleasure and she arrives very soon. So we're, at, we're, at, we're on the plane. We're fast as, oh, Chantel's asleep. I'm dozing. And uh, all of a sudden, I hear this woman shriek, fire. That is not what you want to hear on an airplane. You lot are laughing. Trust me, I was not laughing. And I just sprung up. Chantel jumped up on her knees. And the, the seat behind Chantel on the other side, the entertainment system was on fire. And for 20 seconds, I'm going to be totally honest here, for 20 seconds, I was overcome with fear that was unimaginable. Because I thought you just, you know, if, you, if you're in a fire in a house, you open the window or the door and you run. If you're in a car, you stop and you get out. If you're in an airplane, you sit still. I love you that you're all laughing. I was not laughing. And I was just, we were, I was terrified for about 20 seconds. And then I felt this presence come over me. He said, just speak Jesus. And I just spoke Jesus. And remarkably, they, they managed to put it out. And um, everyone was safe and everything was fine. The, 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 the air host and hostess did such a brilliant job, and it was, it, was, it, was, it was really great to see the professionals doing their job. <laughs> what I realized is there was power, because the only thing I had in that moment was Jesus. And I watched people in that moment who had nothing, who were just, and I remembered I had Jesus, and I spoke Jesus into the atmosphere of that plane. 
and encourage you because many of you have been in situations and we'll all be in situations in the future when we have nothing we have everything there is power in the name of Jesus I speak Jesus go on just whisper his name whisper his name whisper his name that name which carries authority and weight and power in your life Proverbs 18:10 says the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous run in and they are safe whatever issue you face there is a name which is greater you know there's a name. I love the word that, I love the way that his name is described as a tower because whatever I'm facing there is a name which towers over it it's not a tunnel it's a tower so whatever sickness poverty lack the name of Jesus towers over it it is greater and Jesus is towering over your family. He is towering over your health condition. He is a tower. He is a strong tower. The power is in the name. You've got to recognize the authority of his name. Speak out the authority of his name. Number three, you've got to walk in the authority of his name. Taken him by the right hand, he helped him up. Instantly, the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped up to his feet and began to walk. Recognize your authority, speak out the authority, but then we've got to walk in it. We've got to walk daily in the authority of his name. Because you can recognize your authority today, you can even speak it out, but we've got to walk out that door. You and I have got to walk into university, into our careers, into our families, into that broken home. We have to walk back into that flat where no one else is. It's just me and I feel lonely. And so we now have to walk in the authority that God has shown us today. You see, the name of Jesus is not a magic word. I'm not talking about magic. This is not ab agra, abracadabra or hocus pocus. This is not a magic word. This is a holy, sacred Revered name which activates power. Now this is the bit we need to get, ready? The power is not in saying the name, but in understanding the power of the name. Okay, this is why it starts by recognizing the power. Because if you don't know the power of the name, you're not going to be able to activate it. So it's understanding the power of the name of Jesus. The power is putting his name into action. The miracle was not all on Jesus. Peter and John played their part. They go up to the beggar, up to the invalid man, and they say, hey, here's my hand. Come on, it's time to get up. You've been sitting there for years. It's time to break out of your current condition. We're going to walk you into a new authority. And so God is saying, hey, I am here. There is power in my name. We've got to activate it. But also, you've got to want to get healed. Do you know some people are actually, they're actually okay in their condition? Because, by the way, if this man gets healed, guess what? He's got to get a job. <laughs> He's not going to get handouts anymore. He's actually going to have to go to work. Jesus will help you up, but you've got to play your part. I wonder what God is calling us to play our part in, to, to partner with heaven today. Maybe it's to get up and walk in forgiveness. God is saying today, I want to get you up by the authority of my name, but I want you to now walk and forgive that person who's hurt you. I want you to get up and I want you to walk, walk and apply for that job. Well, God, I just haven't found the right one yet. There isn't a right one. Just find the job and God will get you to the right one. Get up and walk and start serving. I think there's a, there's a part for us to go, what's my part here? We've got to recognize it, speak it, walk in it. And number four, two more. We've then got to share in the authority of his name. It says then he went, they went together into the temple, the church, walking, jumping, and praising God. When all the people saw him, Praising God. 
Isn't it interesting that when you understand, recognize the authority of his name, you begin to speak the authority of his name, begin to walk in his authority of his name, what happens? Doors open. It's the year of the open door. What happened is he began to walk into the temple. Remember he had an, he had an ugly problem at a beautiful gate? God removed his ugly problem so he could walk through the beautiful gate. God is removing ugliness, sin, shame, guilt, through the power of the authority of Jesus in people's lives. Not because he wants you to stay in your same condition, but because he wants you to walk forward in this life. God's got plans for you this year, dreams ahead of you. God's got career breakthroughs. God's got, God's got so much ahead of you, but you've got to walk and then share the authority. Isn't it interesting the first place they took this man was to church? To be honest, if, if I've been an invalid for decades, I'd probably want to go for a run or go, go and see my family. Peter and John said, no, you come with us. I think there's a reason why they went to the church first. Because Peter and John wanted the church to see the miracle of Jesus. The miracle that was in front of them. I haven't got any evidence of this, but I'm pretty sure when these Christians were going into the church, they probably tossed him a coin. Maybe they gave him some food on the way in. Who knows the last person they thought was going to walk in late for church was the person who they'd just given a pound to at the door. I think some of them must have thought he's a phony. Was he really disabled? Was he really the real deal? You ever given someone something, I'm mm, not sure I should do this, but I'm, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. He walks in late to church, healed. But the Bible says he doesn't just walk in. Walking and jumping and praising God. I reckon that service took a bit of a turn. Imagine right now someone we know who'd been in a wheelchair for months, for years, for decades, burst through the doors and started hopping and jumping and praising God. What would happen to our faith? So why did they take him to church first? Because they wanted to share the goodness of God. When you share your faith, you sharpen another's faith. There is so much doom and gloom. Let's not bring it through the beautiful gates. Let's not bring the beauty of Christ. Bring it down with all of our negativity. Let's people who lift people up. Let's carry people. Let's just be the happiest place in the city. Because this is where we broadcast and share the good news of what God has done for us. I was at a a, a, a Christian gathering I won't say too many more a few recently I walked in and vicars and pastors just sharing me all the dooms and glues the worry I went home I literally went home because I came with faith I came with good news of what God has done and people want to pull you down even Christians say, but we've got to lift people up we've got to build people up we've got to encourage people what did they do? They got him out of his ugly state through a gate called beautiful. We've got to share it. If we've got nothing good to share, don't share it. Iron sharpens iron. You bring your little faith with my little faith and suddenly we've got a little bit more faith. And we can build people and help people and help people grow strong in their faith. Peter and, Peter and John knew exactly what they were doing. I reckon he said, right, I'm off to tell my mum I'm healed. They're like, come back here. You're going through that door because you had an ugly problem, which is now a miracle. And you're going to walk through that door called beautiful. And you're going to proclaim the good things that God has done. Never be ashamed to share the name of Jesus. The name which is powerful. Jesus has saved you, healed you redeemed you. You tell people. In the movie Jesus Revolution, for those who've seen it, when the revolution swept, 
the kids took off their Nike t-shirts and their Adidas t-shirts and they got these cool Jesus clothing and it was all like graffiti clothing it just said Jesus my saviour but wow because they were so passionate about his name because it's the name of Jesus that brings change and salvation and we don't have to hide our cross at work you ain't got to hide your little band you ain't got to hide it you got to be bold Peter and John they were bold at the gate called beautiful and Jesus saw their faith he saw their boldness and he rewarded it with the first miracle of the church a miracle that 2,000 years later we're still speaking about Jesus isn't a secret to be hidden he said let your light shine be a city on a hill which cannot be hidden our new church is going to be lit up it's going to be beautiful people drive past they're already driving past saying what's going on you wait till the doors open the beautiful gates open people drive in for the first time God says you know what I'm going to take all the ugly stuff at the gate I'm going to make something beautiful if you're alive recognize it speak it walk it share it what time for one more worship you got to worship in the authority of his name it says then he went with them into the temple walking walking jumping and praising God you know when God does something for you so real you're going to walk in the right direction again. You're going to begin to jump, jump for joy, jump for everything that he's done for you and begin to praise and magnify his name. The first thing he does when he gets to the temple is he worships. He didn't just walk in, he jumped in. You know, I, I felt the Holy Spirit. I said this about two years ago, I'm going to say it again. We've got to get the dance back in church. Literally, we stop dancing. We're like this. If we're lucky, we get a right foot tap. Where's all my African brothers and sisters? Come on, you need to help us. We've got far too British. We're Pentecostal. Hang on. I love this. I, honestly, Chantal and I, she's watching. She would be shouting amen. She is. We've got to get the jump back. We're good at walking into church. Walking. This is the progression of Christian worship. Walking and leaping and praising God. Hands aren't in pockets in worship. They're high, lifted to Jesus. Look what look look at Psalm 28, verse 7 in the Passion Translation. I'd never read it in the Passion till this week. It says this: I jump for joy and burst forth with ecstatic, passionate. I'm going to read that again. I jump for joy and burst forth with ecstatic, passionate. I stand for joy. I am a reformed worshipper and my praise is internal. I jump for joy. And burst forth with ecstatic, passionate, jubilant praise. Come on, everyone on your feet.
who we are in Christ it's not just you you're a child of the God of God and you walk in his authority this week which means when you walk into hospital tomorrow morning when you walk into the doctor's surgery when you walk into the dentist chair when you walk into the classroom you walk in his authority it's power of attorney power of attorney it's his authority not your authority my name does not carry much power but his name it carries the authority of heaven so you walk in it and you got to speak it you got to speak it out you speak it out speak the things that are not as if they were speak life into dead places speak light into dark places you walk in it this week. You walk in it. Do not allow any demon of hell. Do not allow anything, anything to stop you walking in the authority that he has given you. And then you share it. You share it. You share the authority. That beggar did nothing. We don't even know if he was a Christian. We don't even know if he gave. We don't know anything. All we know is he was as a recipient of God's grace. Because he came into contact with someone who knew the authority of the power of the name of Jesus. Do you know there are people sick in your office? They may not be Christians yet. They can get healed simply because they come into contact with the authority of heaven. Don't think you've got to get saved for God to fix people. Sometimes God fixes people, then he saves people. You walk in, you carry heaven. And then 
we've got to worship in the authority. We worship with the authority. We don't just walk in and say, I've had another bad week. We walk in and we might say, I've had a bad week, but God, you're good. And God, I've got to jump for joy today. Yeah. I'm going to come in next week walking and leaping and praising God because now I'm through gate called beautiful and something beautiful is about to happen in my family something beautiful is about to happen in my marriage something beautiful if I can just get through the gate something beautiful might take place in his presence because in his presence there is fullness of joy in Jesus name in Jesus name there is power in that name speak his name right now Whatever situation, whatever situation, I speak Jesus. I speak Jesus. Silver and gold I don't have. I don't have money. I don't have everything that I might need. But God, I have you. Silver and gold I do not have. But Jesus, I have you. And in the name of Jesus Christ, walk. Walk in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And the people saw him walking and jumping and praising God. I believe Norwich is going to see, it's going to see you, this church. They're going to say, how can they're still walking when everyone's fallen? How come they're still jumping when everyone else has lost it? It's because we have something that is deeper than silver or gold. We might not have it in the natural, but we have something greater in the spiritual. So one more time, here we go. I've got joy in the morning, joy in the evening. You keep me dancing in every season, whatever comes tomorrow. do that what an incredible atmosphere because when we lift up the name of Jesus there's no other name in heaven or earth by which you can be saved and maybe you're in this room and you've never given your life to Jesus you might not even know what it is to be saved but you sense his presence you know that he's real and you know that he's here and deep down, you, need, you know you need to get right with God. And you're saying, Steve, how, how do I get right with God? How do I get to know Jesus? It's actually really easy. You pray a prayer. You invite Him in. It's the greatest decision that you will ever make to make Jesus the Lord of your life because He's the only one that can deal with your sin because He went to the cross And he rose again so that you, my friend, can be free and whole and saved. The best news you'll ever hear this year. So I'd love to pray a prayer for anyone and everyone that says, Steve, I know I need to get right with Jesus. Would you pray for me? Maybe this is the very first time you've ever prayed that prayer. Or maybe, friend, you once walked with Jesus. But if you're honest, you've walked away. You in the room, you watching online, would be our greatest honor to pray with you in this moment. So in this room, could I ask you to bow your head and close your eyes. Our church are praying for you. For you in the room, you online. And in a moment, I'm going to count to three. And when I count to three, if you're saying, Steve, would you pray for me? I'd like you to raise your hand high enough and long enough 
And then we're all going to pray together. This is your moment, friend. There's no other name by which you can be saved except Jesus. So if you want to call out to him, when I count to three, you raise your hand all across this room. Are you ready? One, two, three. That's it. You lift it up. Thank you. 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 Wow, this is incredible. Look at this. There's no other name in heaven or earth by which you can be saved. This is amazing. So here's what I want everyone to do in this room is to repeat this life-changing prayer after me. You all repeat it after me. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me to forgive all my sin and failures so that I can have a brand new start. Please come into my life and help me by the power of the Holy Spirit to trust and live for you. So Father, I pray for every person that's prayed that prayer in this section, in this section, in this section. Thank you that right now you have come in and you have changed them and they've got a brand new start through you. So we thank you for what you've done in their lives. In Jesus' name. Come on, church. Let's welcome them to the family. And all of you who prayed that online, you let us know in the chat. What a great day. This is what it's all about. Those of you that are in the room, two things, two things we'd love you to do. Firstly, as you leave, you'll see people waving these. It's part of the Bible. It's Mark's gospel. It will tell you more, the story of Jesus. This team have come to meet with you. They'd love nothing more than to give you this as a gift. Even if you've already got a Bible, this marks this decision. 